Prof, for coming out again. I know today on Thursdays normally our press conference uh, and having you out a second time. Um, we, we appreciate you all make, making the trip out here. Uh, today, or excuse me, on March 23rd at roughly 1 p.m., uh, the crew, crews have become aware of a minor leak near the water treatment, plant, plant, uh, treatment center. Uh, during this time, the crews have worked overnight and into the morning to identify the severity of the leak and potential solutions. Uh, there are two leaks uh, on a 42-inch finished water line uh, that is located between the city's main water treatment plant and the Hess High Service Pump Station. Now, the important thing to note about this is not only are our crews on top of it, but we are currently, we anticipate no uh, impact to our customers at this time. Uh, at this time, we believe uh, that the leak, uh, to have the, the current leak under control and the system is stabilized. The water pressure and water quality have not been affected. Crews are working diligently to operate the valve and plan B is underway in, in parallel in case uh, the valve ultimately fails, which at this point we don't anticipate that to happen. The reason why we call this press conference is in a worst case scenario if we have to issue any type of um, uh, boil order or anything along those lines. We want the public, particularly the media, uh, who helps get the message out to be aware uh, so that they can check back. Also, our social media accounts, uh, the official social media accounts with the city of Wichita, will be reporting information as we get the information in. Therefore, if you are someone uh, who follows us on Twitter or, or Instagram or Facebook, then you also get the information as we get it. Again, at this point, we are anticipating no noticeable changes uh, in the, the water service. However, we do want to let people know that we have identified a problem. We are working to fix the problem, and if it gets, uh, the problem increases or gets worse, uh, we will hope that folks, because they have a heads up on this, will check and be able to take appropriate measures uh, in order to, um, uh, to, uh, to respond to this issue. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Alan King, uh, who is someone who can explain a little more in depth uh, about the issue and, and what to expect. Alan? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Alan King, Director of Public Works and Utilities. I'd like to um, repeat some important points that the mayor made, and that is um, there's no cause for alarm. Uh, the purpose for uh, getting this information out is just, as the mayor said, to make people aware of it and so that they are paying attention. And should it go to a place where we don't anticipate it would, that they'd have more uh, uh, heads up, uh, uh, advance um, notice, and be able to take the necessary steps. But again, like the mayor said, there at this point, we don't anticipate that happening, uh, that there would be a, a change in uh, water quality or supply quantity. So uh, what happened was yesterday, uh, a major pipe that goes from our water treatment plant, the existing water treatment plant, to the place where the water collects, <clears throat> excuse me, and then is pumped to all of our city customers, that on that pipe, uh, we have a couple of small leaks. And uh, this is a, uh, a cast, or excuse me, ductile iron pipe, but it was installed back in 1929. Uh, so it's an old pipe. The reason why we were uh, there in that area looking at it, inspecting it, was because uh, this is a pipe that's going to be affected when we do tie in our new water treatment plant to that pump station. So we're there making some improvements to the pipe, to the valves, installing some valves, replacing some valves, all in, all in anticipation of making that connection from the new water treatment plant to this pump station. When we were there and digging and exploring, we found these two small leaks. On a large diameter pipe, 42 inch, even a small leak is a, is a noticeable amount of water. So what we did immediately was to make sure that the system was configured so that there were, weren't any water quality impacts to our customers. We did a little flushing, we made sure that we monitored, we did a little pumping. The sort of things we would do in a normal water main break, we did just on a little bit bigger scale. So when we now are, are putting our focus on repairing this leak, uh, normally what you'd do is you'd close a valve, isolate that pipe, drain it down so that you can make the repair. 
we discovered that the valve that would necessarily be, have to be closed does not uh, function. And so we're still trying to get it loose and functioning, but so far it has not. And so we have to assume that we're going to have to respond to this with a valve that, uh, that valve not operating. Well, one of the things that we're doing is making sure that if uh, we have to repair this pipe, we do it in such a way um, that we continue to provide good, safe, clean water in the amounts that our customers need. So the plan B that the mayor mentioned is for us to get some very large pumps and, and then uh, put together a manifold and some large diameter plastic pipe over overland from one part of our system to another part of our system. And we can do essentially a pump around and then we can take this line out of service and take whatever time we need to, uh, to fix it, even with the valve not functioning. Um, the problem that we see is that it, we still are not sure how long it's going to take for us to take delivery of those pumps and that pipe. We're, uh, we're going to have the answer to that yet later today. If it's a longer period of time, then that leak is unrepaired for a longer period of time. And that's why we're getting in front of you folks. Normally a leaks like this, uh, small leaks, don't become catastrophic leaks in a very short period of time. Normally they change uh, gradually over time and we're monitoring it and noticing the, the amount and type of flow that is on this pipe. And so we'll get some, hopefully get some advanced warning if this gets a lot worse. In the meantime, we are expediting in every way that we can the delivery of this, uh, these pumps and this pipe so that we have uh, basically our safety net to do whatever we have to do on the repair of these lines. That's why we're getting in front of you folks right now is to let you know about this. Uh, there is some risk associated with this planning that we're doing. If everything goes wrong, if you know five things in a row go wrong, we could go to where the mayor was talking about, ultimately to, to the uh, undesirable uh, um, response of a boil order. But let me emphasize that there is no anticipation, reasonable anticipation, that we're going to a boil order right now. And hopefully we'll have a lot of uh, advanced warning if that should happen. We have a certain amount of storage in our reservoirs, uh, six to eight hours. And so if we have to, um, we can pump out of those reservoirs before we have to go to that boil order. So we should be able to provide lots of advance notice. But again, let me emphasize, we don't have any indication at this point that that will be necessary. So that's the, that's the situation. Is, is there any specific questions that I can answer? Yeah, this 42-inch pipe that goes from the plant to the high-pressure uh, pump station, uh, how many of those pipes are there that do, in fact, go from the finished water to the pump station? Is this the only one? Are there three, four of them? What are we, what are we kind of looking at here? There are three of them. Uh, with the way that the plumbing is set up now and with that valve not functioning, by taking this line off, two, two of the three then would be off because they're connected, hydraulically connected. It leaves you with one pipe. That one pipe doesn't have the necessary flow to be able to keep up with the demand, and that's the concern that we have. If we have to take this line off, off, offline, this pipe offline, that basically we lose two of the three that we presently are using. You mentioned that the leaks were found yesterday. Do we have any idea how long it might have been leaking? Uh, we really don't because uh, they were small in nature. Probably uh, the reason why we were able to spot them is because of the work we're doing out there now, uncovering pipe, getting uh, ready for this valve replacement project that we're doing to, to get the system ready for a tie-in with our new Northwest new uh, treatment plant. That's off over a year away. Uh, it could have been leaking for a while. Um, it's, in a, it's in sandy soil, so often a leak like this will go into the sand and follow the sand and you'll never, it'll never surface. So we don't really have a good sense of how long it's been leaking, which is kind of good news because um, it's probably a stable leak. We have leaks in other parts of our system, uh, what we call weepers, where you have a certain amount of leak and we put them on our list and we go and we address them because we don't want uh, them to get worse. But generally our experience is that these are fairly stable and that they aren't they don't fail catastrophically and also our experience is, is that you're going to see a change in the nature of the leak to give you kind of some advance warning if you're watching and we are watching i know we have the ncaa tournament here this weekend is there might be any preventative measures uh, for them because uh, obviously they're going to be playing a lot of basketball and drinking a lot of water yeah, at this point, we don't anticipate there being any interruption in service or water quality. And so I would say that uh, unless things change, um, 
we're just being uh, careful and cautious and transparent to let people know about this. But again, we don't we don't think there's any reason to sound the alarm. Is this valve that's not properly closing? Is that the one that was being ultimately replaced? Is that part of the project to replace that valve, or is it going to have to be special order type of deal? It is ultimately part of our upgrades that we will be doing at the treatment plant. We're, we're going to be doing them in a sequence over time. Because these are, are located on essential portions of the system that you can't just take out of uh, service, we're installing some other valves ahead of that to make it even possible to replace other valves. So this is an ongoing project where we're looking at um, replacing valves, um, upgrading uh, pipe, some different things that we know that we have to do to make HESS um, available and, and reliable once we tie in the new water treatment plant. When, I guess when can we expect any sort of updates on this? <coughs> or when, when would you suspect something would change as far as knowledge of like, oh, it looks like the leak's a lot worse, or the, uh, we are going to be able to pump that out and around. You know, when should we be looking for any sort of changes that are predictable? We're predict we're uh, we're monitoring the leak right now, 24/7, around the clock. We have somebody there actually uh, monitoring it, and as soon as things change, we will get with our uh, folks in the media and particularly the mayor and, and his council to uh, make them aware of that. So as soon as that changes, the information will uh, will go up the up the channel, up the uh, the the line. Um, as far as the next thing that's really important for us to know, that is when we expect to get delivery of that pipe, the manifold and the pumps, the equipment material, and we may have a better idea of that yet tonight. So it may be that we can have some more information available in that regard uh, tomorrow. And obviously a few months ago we did witness a lot of like panic buying and things like that. So what would you like to say to like citizens who might be being aware of the situation right now? Well, I, I keep coming back to this statement, I apologize for that, but if there's no cause for alarm at this point, nothing that is that we're seeing from this incident that would, that would cause us to uh, make that kind of a recommendation. But let me say that it's probably good and prudent practice for everybody at all times to have a certain amount of water, food, and essentials uh, at, on, on hand in your home. And so I'd say that's probably good advice all the time. questions and again after learning from um, the last time we, we had an issue with, with the water we we put our heads together about you know what we could be doing better because we always can be improving here as a city this is a part of that we're giving everyone a heads up early on uh, not to incite panic but to show that we are on top of this uh, at this point there is no uh, reason to believe that, that the uh, situation is going to get worse. However, if it does change, again, we will uh, not only alert the media and alert the council, uh, but also alert the public by utilizing uh, our social media outreach uh, and also traditional media such as the folks in this room. Uh, our goal is to uh, make sure that uh, folks know that this is not a, a, at the level in which it's, it's going to have a noticeable impact on the supply or the quality, uh, but again, just uh, to check back. And as soon as uh, we have updates, we will be posting those updates uh, so that people uh, know where we are in this process. So again, thank you all for being here. Uh, thank you, Alan, for your team uh, working on this and for being here to answer some of the, or to explain some of the technicalities behind this. Uh, and we will keep you all uh, posted as we get more information. Thank you.